Welcome back. We're taking a look at earned value methods, and today we're going to be covering milestones with percent complete, weighted milestones with percent complete. So let's take a look at that. You do remember in the last episode, I drew out an example. I'm going to use that same example to underscore the difference between milestones weighted on their own without percent complete and milestones with percent complete, that is weighted milestones. So let's go down memory lane. You do recall this. This was the example I gave you. Now, using milestones, just milestones, which we called milestone weights, we weighed this at $100, $150, In this episode, we're gonna take a look at a different method. They're very similar, but there is one distinguishing factor. This, again, we call this milestones. Weights. with percent complete. Percent complete. That is number three in our series. All right, so what is the difference between number two and this number three? Well, the major difference here, my friends, is that we are going to be allowing for partial claim of earned value for some of these milestones. So let's assume we are at time now. Let's say time now is... Let's say time now is here, if this is time now. Okay, you can see this milestone is weighed at $100, but the percent complete of the work right here, percent complete, let's say percent complete is 60. 60% complete for task one, associated with milestone one. If that was the case, we would multiply the $100 attributed to milestone one by 60%. So 100 times 0 0.6, and that would mean at this point in time, we can claim $60 for our earned value, okay? You know, we're talking about earned value in all of this. And that's pretty much how it works. That is how it works. We look at the milestone. We look at how much weight we've given it. We take a look at the percent complete for that milestone. And then we multiply to get what exactly the earned value is. Again, the earned value that I'm talking about here is from inception to date. But don't forget that as you proceed through time, it gets more and more deep as far as distinguishing cumulative from current. And that's why in the previous episode, I said, when you're cumulative, make sure that it's cumulative. You know, for example, the formula behind me, the formula behind me, this one right here, you know, you remember this formula? This formula, right? This formula, the, the, the numbers, like if you take a look right here, that C, that C you're seeing, those two Cs in yellow, those two Cs are cumulative. They mean cumulative. Why am I stressing cumulative? Because Inception to date is what you use this formula with, not current. 
but cumulative. You need to watch those earned value mania videos. They'll probably help you. I would, I would suggest that. I would. But anyway, going back to our view here, let me give you one more example. So that's an example for the first milestone. If you are proceeding on the project and at a different point in time, you wanted to compute earn value based on certain statuses, you would you do something like this. Let's say we are, let's say we're here, right? If that is time now, this is time now, and you can see, let's say milestone one is 100% done. Milestone two is 100% done. Milestone three, let's say it's 30% done. Well, you need to multiply 100% of 100 is 100. 100% 100 of 150 for milestone two is 150. 30% of 200 is 60. So you would have at time now, cumulative, right? Cumulative earned value would be $100 plus $150 plus $60. That would be your earned value right now. And that would be earned value is 310. Now, if you wanted to find current earned value, you would only be dealing with, let's say that time period, like when you started T3, let me make it look really clear. Let's say, Let's say this is a time period. This is a time period. I'm going to move this one in just so that you are totally clear that it is not happening in the same month. So I've moved it back and we're looking at this time period. If you are looking at just, let's say this is January. If you're looking at just January, earn value cumulative is 310, but earn value current is just 60 because we're looking at the time period where T3 spans across and where it started, for example, okay? So I hope this stuff is making sense to you. This is number three in our earned value methods, if you will, series. And using the earned value method known as milestone weighting with percent complete has advantages and of course disadvantages. But one of the advantages is it requires objective measurable milestones. So you don't just throw out any old milestone, you gotta think, are we really done with something tangible, something sensible? So that is one of the advantages of it. It also holds the project team accountable, which is good. So it's not just throwing out a number. It's not just saying, oh, we're this percent complete. It also weighs the milestones as well. So it gives you a more accurate prediction of where you really will end up, in my opinion. Um, and most customers will prefer some accountability than just a, a free for all throwing out a percent. The, the weighting plus the percent complete does help. You know, and the, the partial credit, the partial credit of earned value against the milestones, it helps. What are the disadvantages? It requires a CAM. In those days, we would have control account managers over control accounts, and they would make an assessment of the percent complete for the milestones. And it requires a little bit more work, you know, because you've got a double whammy. You've got the milestone waiting, and then you've got the percent complete on top of that. But nonetheless, it is a great way of you keeping track of your project um, in, a, in a more organized fashion than just throwing out a number. And that is, of course, one of the hallmarks of earned value itself. All right, and that concludes episode three. I'll see you again in our next episode of Earned Value Methods. Bye for now.